Welcome everyone, and thank you for coming out. We want to thank, first of all, St. Andrew's Episcopal Church for allowing us to hold this presentation and welcome all of you here. We also want to thank the Friends of New Berlin, and in particular, Judy Smith, for organizing this presentation. We're about to listen to Michael Bobgreen. He's currently the district manager of Pennsylvania's Bradford County Conservation District. He's the current chair of the Bradford County Gas Exploration Advisory Committee, and he will present on the impacts of shale gas development in his community. Bradford County is currently the most developed county in Pennsylvania's Marcellus Natural Gas Play with over 2,700 wells permitted. Mr. Love Green will provide an overview of the industry development in Bradford, the experiences of residents, and what we may expect if drilling were to come to Shenandoah County. I always like to start um, a talk about natural gas um, by setting a little perspective. Um, in my 33 years um, in dealing with natural resource management, we really haven't come across a controversial issue as volatile as, as this one is. And so, you know, I really want to challenge all of you um, to practice critical thinking. Um, I've seen legislators on both sides of the aisle, some of them that might believe that we need less regulation for industry, some of them that think we need more legislation. I've seen industry people put a spin on information. I've seen our regulators put a spin on information because they want, you know, the citizen citizenry to, to, to feel confident that they're being looked after. Everybody has that perspective. So again, you know, I want to challenge you all, really ask where that information is coming from and to put it in perspective. Also, the information that I'm presenting here may or may not be applicable to this location. Um, one of the reasons that Bradford County is kind of important and why the industry located in Bradford County is all of these lines represent the different transmission lines. Those are the lines that carry the gas from the shale plays to the markets. We're right up here in Bradford County and there's a lot of different um, pipelines and transmission lines that come, that come right through our county. But where all the gas is going currently is to the east coast and that's where the big demand is. Um, it's unfortunately uh, that all the gas is being produced in Bradford County very few of us in Bradford County can actually utilize it because we don't have a distribution system. We have no way of taking it to our homes. Um, Bradford County um, and Susquehanna County happen to be what the industry calls a sweet spot. That's where that, that um, shale is the thickest and it's also some of the highest production. So that's another reason why they, they've begun in Bradford County when they started in Pennsylvania. Um, what to expect um, from a normal process um, when they decided to put in a pad, they would um, locate it. Um, they would start to put the access road in, and that would take two to three weeks. Um, the well itself takes about three weeks to drill, and on each pad you may have uh, six, eight wells per pad. Um, the, the hydraulic fracturing itself will take about a week to do. Um, a lot of truck traffic that we move during all that time in and out, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, rig and site crews would be on 24-7, so that they would be populated. A lot of um, temporary inconvenience as far as noise and lights. Um, staging areas would be around that, that pad. Um, again, more storage areas. Um, there was damage to roads, and I'll talk more extensively about roads a little bit later on. And then we're seeing a lot of car activity to provide the stone for all these pads. But, but again, that's what, what you would expect. And again, the three weeks to drill and the one week, week to fracture, um, that's for each well. So again, if you have six wells um, on a pad or eight wells on a pad, that would be times six or times eight. Yeah, here's Bradford County. Those are all the production units that have been recorded in Bradford County. Um, I believe this was as of July of this year. Um, very heavy equipment intense. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest inconveniences to everybody in the county. There's a lot of truck traffic. My office is three miles from the courthouse and I have a lot of meetings in the courthouse. 
Hill doesn't really take me 45 minutes to get to the courthouse to go those three miles to get all the traffic and heavy equipment. But again, I'll talk a little about that later. Um, again, you know, we're developing the PAG, our access roads. Those access roads, you know, where they put them are like driveways. Um, you need to um, work through the local municipality or the state depending on what that road is. So that's, that's a local jurisdiction thing on uh, whether it's a safe entrance, um, whether you have clearance. Again, lots and lots of truck traffic in and out of that, so um, that's something to consider. This, our county planning office maintains a map of all the different activities related to the gas industry. Well, maybe not all of them, but the majority of them. This is an overall map, so every one of these symbols and lines on here represents some impact in Bradford County. And I'll go through them individually. It's a very busy map. Um, Again, each one of these, these little crosses is a, is a well point um, that's been drilled so far. But I'll go through these um, again a little bit individually. These are all the different companies. Each of these different symbols represents a different gas company. At one point, we had about 24 different companies in Bradford County. Uh, but what they did is they went out and they, they, they leased. They got somewhere in the neighborhood of about 80% of Bradford County leased, 85%. And then all these companies went literally into the back room and swapped leases. And that was sort of they could consolidate their holdings and make their gas to market. So you know, the take home message that you know, if you held out to sign a lease with a specific company because you felt good about that company, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the company that's going to wind up drilling um, on your property. Um, these are gas lines. Um, we're, we're pushing over a thousand miles of some type of pipelines in Bradford County. Uh, uh, another point to make, all of these gas lines right now, there is no um, control over where those gas lines go except for the private landowner. Uh, um, so it's kind of a haphazard development. They'll get leases where they can. And, and one of the things that's worth noting is that we have very little um, planning or zoning. Um, our, our local towns don't really get engaged in too much regional planning. And, and one of my points is that everywhere they put a pipeline is planning in a way, because wherever they put a pipeline, you no longer can develop over the top of it. So in a way, some of this is, is planned you know, in reverse. We'll count on royalties that aren't getting them because again, those valves are, are, are shut right now. <coughs> the price is so low. Um, this was a, uh, it's, it's, it's a dated map, but here's Bradford County, an idea where all those, those water withdrawal sites are located. So a number of those sites all over the county. Again, they tend to be proprietary, so each company has their own water withdrawal sites. Um, and they try and locate them all around the county, so trucking costs are reduced. And after the well's in, there needs to be local municipal regulations that say, okay, now you can't build a house within a certain distance of the well. Um, talk a little bit more about impacts on the landscape, you know, those, those large landscape impact. Um, this farmer here has, this is a well pad here, there's another well pad up here. Over here is one of those water withdrawal sites. And then what doesn't show up in the picture is, is a quarry. So um, there are a lot of different impacts that you can see in Bradford County. Um, again, to get a sense of, of how close or how dense um, you can see those pads, um, this is Google Earth, they, they just updated their maps. So, you know, here's a pad, 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 here's a quarry. So again, some of those kind of get a sense of it. Um, this is a fracturing site, usually no aren't permitted on site when they're fracturing, but you can see all those connections, all those high pressure pumps that, that are going um, as far as injecting that water into the ground to fracture that rock. Um, I got this slide from someone, you know, Professor of Penn State, and it's just an example, and as I mentioned, each one of those sites is a little industrial complex in itself, and so they need to take those controls to protect that site. Um, you have about 3,200 pipe joints of low pressure and another 2,600 pipe joints, 500 of them are, are high pressure. So you get about 6,000 pipe joints and you have that many pipe joints, you know, sooner or later one of them is going to break. Um, quarries is, is something um, that kind of popped up all of a sudden. Um, 
what led to a couple things that put a lot of trucks on the road, that, that created a lot of income from quarries, but also forced the price of aggregate way up. So our municipalities or contractors that need aggregate for a driveway or, or, or you know, some kind of construction job were paying more for that for that aggregate. And, and inquiries were, were you know, preferred providing material to the gas companies that were a lot less picky than our DOT that had very um, rigid specifications for that quarry material. Another landscape impact that we've seen is pipe yards and supply yards. So again, there are a lot of staging areas that pop up all around the countryside. Um, this is another thing that's popped up, RV site rentals. Anybody that's got um, an online septic system and a well um, has thrown up signs because housing has been an incredible issue with this. And it's, we estimated that at the height of it, we might have had somewhere between 10 and 20,000 workers um, in Bradford County. Um, that just created a big demand for, for housing. That was one of those social economic impacts that for those that, that weren't seeing any economic gains in this was, was a real kind of blow to them because people on fixed incomes are paying somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, five to six hundred dollars a month for a house in the country. Um, that went up to fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars practically overnight. Um, truck traffic, uh, again, that a very significant uh, impact. Um, this is a, a graph that I grabbed from Texas uh, and probably reflects what we saw in Bradford County. But at, at you know, one point we might have three, 300 trucks a day going into a site. The sites is another thing, massive amounts of sand and chemical pipes were being brought into the county. And so um, we've seen a resurgence in the rail yard um, development as well as the number of trains that have been coming into the county um, just 10 times what we've had. And so they're bringing all this in. Also, I mean, here's you know that rail siding type of quick development that just happened um, alongside the rails so that they could stage that material and, and, and get it on to the, to the other sides. And this is a high school right here, so again, we're seeing some of that at different places. Compressor stations, currently the pressure from the wells in Bradford County are so high that, that, that they don't need very many compressor stations, but they are starting to build them. I've asked the industry, okay, how many, how many wells per compressor stations so they can get a feel for, for how big a disturbance. And these compressor stations are, again, maybe 10, 15 acres of area in size. Um, they're, they're telling me about 50 wells per compressor station. And I haven't seen or heard or seen any documentation where any water supply has been polluted by fracturing. Um, fracturing is, is not the issue, it's the drilling the well itself. Um, how many how many wells? I, I couldn't tell you because there was some um, where the gas company agrees to um, pay um, a settlement, in which case there's a gag order, so you don't hear about those. There are some that DEP is investigating, and so that's potentially a criminal complaint, and so they don't publish those. Um, I, I, this is back of a napkin type of um, calculations. Um, I started to say, okay, what are all the land use impacts if you started to add them all up? And when I added them all up, you know, I came to a little over 34,000 acres so far that's been disturbed as part of the development of the play in Bradford County. You know, another kind of minus to this is that all our emergency services are volunteer groups, and so when we get triple or quadruple the number of calls, you know, that puts a stress on a lot of these volunteer um, first responders. They predicted that, you know, for the, for the Marcella Shale, Tioga, Shalom, and Balloon, whether they get this far in the North Island, because the shell gets a lot closer to the surface. But you've got Utica Shale and you've got other shells. So now that they've got access to these shells, the sky's the limit. That's why, you know, one of the, one of the interesting things, they say, okay, you know, what happens to these pads after you're done drilling? And so what we're going to drill will shrink them down and it'll only be an acre in size. And, and you know, I, I kind of being the wise thought that I am, I'll ask them all, okay, you know, you're going to drill six wells on there. As they peter out, then you're going to drill six more and, and, and to, to stimulate. And, and I guess I'm going to come back and refracture. They say, no, the industry doesn't refracture. What we'll do is we'll put laterals down in between the ones that exist. 
and then fracture so that it's more efficient now rather than trying to refracture the same rock as now gas pour. So um, there could be there 30, 50, 60 years and never be done. And the industry has representatives have told me that once they open the export um, terminals down in the Gulf, that they will be back in the engines. And, and just a little side note on first responders, um, since this is such a different activity, um, the gas industries have done a lot of training with our emergency responders. They don't run first responders on site if there's vaccine. Um, a lot of the gas is odorless um, and very high pressures, extremely high pressures that you know, punch a hole right through an individual. So um, they've trained our first responders that if there's an accident or something on a drill bed or a site, they are watching to go off and do site control and let their emergency people go through. Um, I know um, in town with all the trucks and diesel, they're probably is definitely down. Mortgage requires them to have insurance coverage, no. usually, at least to the amount that's uh, been no. loaned by the Absolutely. That was a very real, in that sense, of a lease issue. Uh, unless you have a hold funds clause that the company accepts all responsibility for damage done as part of the drilling process, you become a co-owner of that. By having a lease, you become a co-owner of that, of that well, and therefore you share the liability of that well. So if something happens that there is a, you know, a pollution event or you know, some harm um, happens, you as part owner of that well also share the responsibility of that well, and that affects your insurance rates. And so some people are having to buy multi million dollar insurance policies. Very much, everyone coming for asking your questions. If you still have questions, please write them down and we're going to, in an orderly way, get them answered and emailed out to the group. I want to thank Mike for a very fair, uh,